Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Rolling? Well, we have to be rolling because the air conditioner just clicked on. <laughs> <laughs> it happens every single time. Of course. Okay, we're, uh, we're on the other side of the house uh, for our next uh, uh, new guest. Cut that. Our next guests go all the way from either Indonesia or Malaysia. And it's from one of my favorite uh, genuses of lapids, and that's Bungaris. Now we all know good friend Joe Slowinski uh, misjudged uh, a mimic for the real deal and of course the perfect storm of problems occurred and it cost him his life. Crates are really nothing to be mucked around with although I've seen people at the Bangkok snake farm where the, the Thai Red Cross uh, gets extracts venom for, uh, uh, for anti-venom production. Uh, the guys during the day handle the banded crates and the crates just are like, yeah, whatever. Okay, crates are normally your Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde sort of snakes. Uh, during the daytime, they're very docile and hide their head and and act very placid and one of the main reasons why they do that is because crates unlike other snakes are, are night snakes that is they come out after the sun goes down and that's when they hunt and that's when they crawl into people's uh, houses and, and you know under them while they're sleeping they roll over and a lot of times they don't even know they've been bitten and wake up gasping, gasping for breath and stuff, and it's a telltale uh, crate bite. <clears throat> but uh, during the night, the, the crates are uh, are quite active and quite aggressive. Uh, and the reason why they're docile during the day is, unlike other snakes, their pupils are fixed and dilated so they can see well at night and they don't have the pupillary muscles to close their apertures down because they don't need them. They're sleeping in their burrow during the day or under, under something. So they just, uh, uh, you know, and that's why they hide their head because bright lights really, you know, sort of freak them out and stuff. So um, that's our deal with crates. This happens to be Bungaris candidus. Um, and here's the pointy end. Hello, pointy end. Hello. How are you? Huh? Now we're going to put them in this bin temporarily until I get a cage for them. But uh, very nice looking character. They have the traditional triangular shape, which is usually uh, sort of diagnostic it, that it's a snake eater. And crates have this really, really cool tongue, uh, different from other, uh, other snakes. Uh, maybe Mrs. Viper Keeper uh, can, can have a look. I am told that these guys are already feeding on rodents. Um, the bin is a little small, but it... <laughs> Uh, I would rather put the crates in the small bin right now and the springy bothrops that I've got uh, to unpack next in the larger uh, tub. Uh, uh, you know, more fun with pogo sticks with venom. But uh, uh, this is a crate and this... Oh, tough. I'll look at the other one and I'll, then I'll prognosticate which I think is which. But... Uh, 
crates have presynaptic and postsynaptic neurotoxins. Very important to, to recognize uh, the difference between uh, bungarus and dendroaspis, the mambas. Dendroaspis only has postsynaptic neurotoxins. Postsynaptic neurotoxins uh, do not bind permanently to the synapse. Your body can illuminate them after a few hours and the site is again active and, and ready for normal operation. Antivenin will bind uh, to the uh, toxins and, and get rid of it. Presynaptic neurotoxins like the alpha bungara toxin that this uh, character has inside, it's little venom glands there, and he doesn't need a whole lot of venom to kill you. Uh, crate venom, the lethal dose in mice, is probably just a milligram or two, and they can probably produce probably 10 milligrams or so per, per bite or so. Uh, so there's perhaps 10 lethal doses. Once the post, uh, the presynaptic neurotoxin binds to your neuron, it's fried, cooked, done for, uh, no longer useful. The antivenin will not reverse it. It is an unreversible uh, death of that neuron, which means that your body has to grow a new neuron to replace the one that was just fried. So if you get bit by one of these guys, it's very important that you get antivenin on board as quickly as possible because you want it to neutralize in your blood and not uh, have a chance to attach to your, uh, your neuron. Uh, you know, people that survive this bite uh, will spend time, you know, relearning to walk or to coordinate their hands to write uh, any of those sort of fun processes that we take granted. As well as you may spend weeks or months, uh, you know, on a respirator till your respiratory pathways grow new uh, 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 neurons to allow you to breathe. Okay, you can go in there. Go on. It's nice and moist, and it'll be dark in a second, and you'll really like it. I promise you. Come on. Come on. Don't be a pain in the butt already. There you go. Okay, crate number one. Now, this one is even larger. It's like, holy crap, how am I going to fit the, the crate? Now, you know, it's labeled here Bungarus candidus, which is very good because I prefer going with the scientific name. It's also labeled Blue Crate. Uh, the only Blue Crate that I know of is the Indian Crate, and that's uh, Bungarus chirulus. Um, you know, that's why I you know, I stress to people, you really should learn the scientific name because the common names are real confusing and when it comes to treating a snake bite, uh, if you know exactly what genus and species is, uh, increases your chance. Common name, if there's like five or six in that particular uh, region that you're in with the same common name, like in South America, fur de lance. That doesn't go very far. There's a lot of snakes that are called fur de lance. Okay, so my next question is why, is why is there blood on my snake bags? Oh boy. Well, this is not good. I bet, he, I bet it rubbed its nose raw. Oh, no. Crates are known for that. Um, okay, so we'll see what the uh, surprise we have here. I know, your head's right there. I see you. Oh, you did! Exactly what I thought you did. Oh, poor guy. Yeah. Crates like boom slangs will rub their nose until it's raw. Hi, how you doing? Aww. How you doing? I know, I know, I know. Don't get all jerky. This is a classic uh, threat uh, posture when you see them doing the herky-jerky there. Hi. I know, I know I'm big and scary. I'm sorry. 
we should really put something on that nose to protect it. We really should because it's going to go in this bin and get all dirty. So you know what we're going to do so it doesn't get all dirty? We're going to use a different bin that's clean. And we're just going to put some paper towels for a day or so until that nose sort of dries up. Okay? Is that a deal? I know. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to be frightening you. We have a we have a deal with uh, all of our friendly neighborhood snakes here at the at the uh, at the lair. You don't scare Viper Keeper. Viper Keeper doesn't scare you. Okay? Is that a deal? Huh? Is that okay? So we're gonna put you in right as you are for now. I would love to put some Neosporin on that nose, but sometimes less is more. I, you know, I. Number one is I don't like to intervene unless it's really, really necessary. Hello. How are you doing? Huh? How are you doing? Yeah, I know you're inquisitive. And no, I am not going to let you bite my jeans like that wild uh, forest cobra. Even though your fangs are much shorter, I'm just not interested in you uh, doing anything to me. <laughs> you know, I can... I can sort of laugh off a forest culprit bite. Uh, you can't laugh off a crate bite. Period. Case closed. This is this is a different level of envenomation than than a forest culprit bite. Yes, forest culprits can kill you really quickly. The, the bad thing is the crate bites. You don't even know if you've been envenomated until up to 24 hours later mm. when it hits you. So you have plenty of time to get anti it and get to the hospital, whereas with the forest cobra or the mamba, you better get to the hospital fairly quickly. Um, but, you know, this guy, generally speaking, as a precaution, and, and just like the eastern coral snake, okay, eastern coral snakes also have presynaptic neurotoxins, uh, you want to have anti venin at the first sign of any symptoms and sometimes you even want to you know have them give you a vial or two as a preventative uh, thing because you don't want uh, you don't want you know crate venom flowing around in your system you want it uh, bound and neutralized and out of here uh, let's see mm, tough to call they may be actually the same sex okay dude you want to go in there. I know it's white. I don't have black. Sorry. Uh, beautiful, beautiful chocolate brown. Okay. Don't rub your nose. It's bad enough. Okay. He's got a real cute little face. Oh, the, the crates are adorable uh, face-wise, but, you know, you really have to be careful because you don't want them hanging off your nose. Mm, no. So, um, that's... That's the new crates that I have uh, to deal with for a little while. I am told that they're already eating uh, rodents. Uh, time will tell. Excellent. But, you know, if you believe anything that any, <laughs> any herp guy tells you except your very trusted friends, uh, uh, you know, I've got land for you that's about 12 feet underwater and... <laughs> full of PCBs and all sorts of nasty stuff. Never believe what a, what a herp guy, especially somebody selling snakes to you, because uh, often it is not uh, made of facts. A matter of fact, uh, you know, they could actually be somewhat uh, uh, political in nature and, and work their way towards uh, Washington, D.C., where facts don't exist at all, mm. except they're corrupt. That's the only fact. Okay, let's go play with some pogo sticks. Oh, goody. Okay. Now we get to the, the real dangerous part of the unpacking. Uh, and that happens to be uh, bothrops. Anything, any genus that begins with bothrops or bothriatus uh, means danger. <laughs> uh, these are uh, bothrops atrox, like pogo stick in the other room, just from a different place. 
Now, the pogo stick in the other room is an F2 generation snake. Uh, its parents, I think there's another bag in here. I hope Ray double bagged as usually protocol requires. Yep. Um, the pogo stick in the other room, who I've had since 2005, uh, uh, the pair of tongues that are hanging there, please. Yep, thank you. Uh, her parents come from Trinidad. Uh, it was bred by my good friend Thomas Emmerschmacher. Um, really good guy, very knowledgeable. Of course, the bathrops have to mess in the bag. Um, these are pit vipers, so we work a little differently because we don't want to touch the bag. Uh, we don't want to give them a chance to sink their longer fangs into me. These will not be so polite like the uh, Bungaris. These will be uh, and these will be a little bit more uh, difficult. Uh, so at any rate, uh, these two are animals from Guyana, uh, another area in the Bothrops Atrox range. imagine by some things written on the bag and not your basic oh this is male or this is female but just some other terminology I would imagine that this one is probably the male hello nice to see you One just doesn't prod bothrops. Come on, I want to see what the what you got hanging here. I, 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 yo, you decided that uh, leave my junk alone, huh? I, 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 I. That's a male. Okay, as I expected, this one was the male. It's a very unhappy male. <laughs> well, I was just trying to play with his junk. I, you know, uh, at the airports, when TSA uh, tries to check my junk, I'm not very happy about it. But, uh, but that's the male, and I surmised it was the male because the female has something else written on the tag here. Oh, psycho. Psycho. <laughs> now... Female and psycho go together hey. really well. I resemble that remark. <laughs> and the males, you know, like to mark their territory and therefore dirty the bag. And the females might want something a little bit more clean and pleasant. So we'll just let them chill overnight. Hi, Mr. Naja. <laughs> I'm very distracted at the moment. I have Mr. Naja just going nuts next to me. Well, he's going nuts in a nice way. Yes, you know, in a good way. When he arrived here, he was very unfriendly and wasn't eating. And uh, he's decided that I'm okay because I bring him yummy things to eat. And since then, he's taken a shine to me and is not so so uh, quiet and hiding. And uh, uh, he's not like the other Mr. Naja, who's off hopefully making little Najas. Um, uh, this guy will shoot out of the cage and, and try to get food from you. But fortunately, 
uh, this Mr. Naja uh, seems to shed his eye caps on with yes. the regular, <laughs> rest of the shedding. So I'll take that other uh, consolation, uh, you know, in stride and not worry so much about it. Uh, the fact that I don't have to play games and uh, worry about pulling eye caps off of an irate six foot Indian cobra who can kill me in 15 minutes if you bit me. Um, you know, that's okay. I'll, uh, I'll take one that shoots out of the cage and I don't have to restrain. Eh, you're not as big as I thought you were, but you are a psycho. This young lass, I am not going to be sitting on the floor. <laughs> Oh, a bundle of joy. Hello. Hello. Are you indeed a femme fatale? Really tough to tell. I wonder if they probe these. I know for a fact that I'm not reaching in here and grabbing that tail. suspect. Doesn't matter. If I have two males, great, because I have one big female in the other room that, uh, that needs a boyfriend. So it doesn't matter to me. Um, I sometimes wonder why people have so much trouble sexing snakes. Uh, I don't think it's, in most cases, terribly difficult. Uh, in some cases, uh, it can be very difficult. Uh, in that case, you probe it, but the vast majority of snakes, I can, I can look at uh, their tail and, and be reasonably sure of what I got. Um, especially with an older snake. Younger snakes is a little bit more problematic. Okay, that's it. That's all the kids that are here uh, for now. Um, uh, just uh, adding to the uh, breeding colony. Uh, um, you know, nothing more, uh, nothing less. Okay, thanks.